What is the Well-Ordered Language, the Curious Student's Guide to Grammar? Well-Ordered Language is a grammar series from Classical Academic Press. It was created by the same company that created Writing and Rhetoric which is our favorite writing curriculum, and I do have a video on that. Well-Ordered Language is a very interactive curriculum that involves reading, writing, listening, speaking, along with choral recitation and some hands-on activities and games. While parts of the lessons are tightly structured, many lesson activities allow for discussion or open-ended responses. It uses a very systematic sequential approach for teaching grammar. And basically your child will learn to analyze sentences using a unique system for identifying and marking up parts of speech and their functions within each sentence. While ordered language was written to support a classical approach to education, this is evidenced by the logical and analytical approach to study grammar, as well as the repetition and memorization. What does the well-ordered language consist of? Well-ordered language consists of four levels with two books, book A and book B, for each level. Level one is appropriate for around third or fourth grade, level two, fourth or fifth grade. Levels three and four can be used for grades five through eight. You can complete both books A and B in a year, but as homeschoolers we know, we don't wait for the following year to start a curriculum or start a new book or new level, we just jump right in. There are both a teacher's edition and student workbook. The teacher's edition has everything the student workbook has in it alongside some other things, such as Overprinted answers, instructional notes printed in boxes, additional teaching pages for oral exercises, games and sentence analysis, plus pages with optional activities to be completed based upon fables, tales, and poems. There are also songs and chants and in the back, you have the song lyrics here. See, there's a table of contents and you can see chapter one through eight. Here we have well-ordered language, a classical approach to English grammar instruction, why study grammar, learning grammar, teaching grammar, effective teaching methods, learning with delight, compelling need, ongoing support. And then here you can see we have lesson planning options. There are three potential schedules in the teacher's edition here, which allows flexibility in scheduling. One option is fast paced five days per week for covering both books within a few months, or the other two schedules, which allow you to complete both books in about half a year, six months, four times per week, three times per week, whatever you're interested in doing. Here is the introduction to the students. And then we have an introduction to the teachers. You have the well-ordered language marking system. Analyze, 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 then diagram. And over here are some sample sentences. One from the beginning of well-ordered language level three and one from later that feature its marking system. They show how the student's analytic skills will develop as the year goes on. And so what these sentences cannot show, however, is the unfolding process of analyzing each sentence orally while marking it. How to use this book, learn, memorize, review. And so they give you options on how to use it. And here you have pedagogical principles and guidance. You can stop to read it, but one, for example, is repetition is the mother of memory. So let me show you the back, the extras that are contained in the back. You have the student's literary appendix for all of the chapters. And then here's some um, understanding poetry. Then you have biographies, meet the authors. The bibliography, seek the sources. Glossary of terms song lyric and the diagramming overview. For example, when you diagram an adverb, draw a diagonal line under the word that it modifies and write the adverb on the slanted line about the title and then some notes. As you can see here throughout the book, there are explicit instructions, including complete scripting and complete scripting of the sentence analysis. 
it makes it easy even if you are weak in grammar. So as you can see, the opening paragraphs introduce the chapter's main focus using as an example an excerpt from poetry or fiction and the terms to remember introduces new terms and reviews previously encountered terms. You can add movement and hand gestures to help keep the lesson lighthearted and captivating. Pause for punctuation or moment of mechanics. And so each chapter has a brief section highlighting a rule of punctuation or mechanics. And then the rule is reinforced in the lessons. The teacher's book shows you how to guide students right here through an initial sentence analysis and to explain what happens in each step. And this is what you see, but not your child. And that's the well-ordered notes. You have a well-ordered notes for each lesson. In the review it, you might review like grammar terms to start the lesson. In the practice it, you'll warm up your child in the main task, which is sentence analysis. And in analyze it, you'll use the well-ordered language marking system to analyze the sentences. Then what's next in the book? Your child will get to the lesson to learn section. And there's an A, B, and C in each chapter, as I said before. And what's gonna happen here is you are going to help your child with the remaining practice sentences. And it, this should be done together. And the choral analysis should be done in unison. And if you guide your child through the sentences that comprise the first part of the worksheet, you can have them do the rest independently. That's what I do. And then in the teacher's book, there are optional sentences for practice, and they're usually about 10 sentences here. So there are weekly options and alternatives if you want extra practice. One of them is lessons to enjoy. They usually give a poem in the student book. And then in the teacher's book, they also offer a tale. And then here are some, in the teacher's books, a sentence bank. And also in the teacher's book are some side panels. So for example, whenever you see these boxes on the side like this these are called side panels so here is the child's book there is a side panel called to the source and it helps your child understand the etymology of various grammar terms and then there's off the shelf which provides more information to your child about the books mentioned in the chapters and should pique their interest of the curious reader. On the map, this guides your child to resources on the historical locations referenced in the lesson. Your book, you're going to have from the sideline and that's gonna help you understand the lesson. You can read it ahead of time. For example, right here, expect full participation. And then we have something important called fewer than five. And that's important to homeschoolers because That'll give you an optional activity if you have less than five children. And it says here, for example, this activity, they have it for like a lot of kids, but they said it's easily adapted for even a single student. You can volley sentences and prompts back and forth. Well-ordered language also has an MP3 file for the songs and the chants. Your child will memorize definitions of essential elements, such as the eight parts of speech and four classes of verbs through choral recitation. The well-ordered language also contains extra practice and assessments. If you're interested, you can purchase that separately. Um, I didn't feel as though we needed that. All right, and since we're just starting 3A, come join us in our first lesson. Introduction to students. Maps have existed since ancient times. Maps show relationships between locations. We have to do the whole first. entire chapter. We have to do the whole entire chapter today. Chapter one, four kinds of sentences, principal elements and adjectives and adverbs. Working set together logic. Words, dude. Words. Words. <laughs> Words set together logically make up sentences, and each sentence expresses a complete thought. <laughs> Let's pretend like we're from the South. Clear thinking and clear sentences result in clear communication, but you're not being clear right now. 
And now we're going to start part one, four kinds of sentences, ideas to understand. One amusing passage from the novel, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain uses all four kinds of sentences. As you recall, interrogative sentences are simply questions. One of Twain's pirates asks, what sails? Which means what sail is she carrying? The obvious goal of an interrogative sentence is to gain an answer. And this pirate gets one in the next line. Sometimes though, no answer is expected. That sort of interrogative sentence is called a rhetorical question. And its purpose is stylistic to engage the reader without having him answer aloud. I want you to read to the source rhetorical. The word rhetorical comes from the Greek word reader, meaning orator or speech maker. Interrogative sentence, whether it's rhetorical or not, ends with a question mark. Imperative sentences express a command or a request. The subject is always you, even though it is only implied and does not appear in the sentence. Twain's pirate captain spouts out imperative sentences as he gives orders to his crew. Lay out a loft there, half a dozen of ye. He is really saying you lay out a loft there, meaning you climb the mast. Half a dozen of ye is all six of you. An imperative sentence can end with either an exclamation point or a period. Exclamatory sentences show excitement and strong feelings. Twain's pirate is eager to sail, so he enthusiastically exclaims, Sheets and braces, now my hearties. Did you notice that this exclamatory sentence is missing something? There is no verb. It is important to note that as a burst of emotion, this kind of sentence doesn't necessarily behave like the other sentences. Sometimes an exclamation is missing the principal elements. An exclamatory sentence ends with an exclamation point. And now we're going to talk about terms to remember. So we have the eight parts of speech and the sentence. I'll go ahead and read it and then you're gonna read it by yourself and then I'm going to test you on it. Song lyrics, eight parts of speech. Eight parts of speech are classes of words with the same kind of meaning and use. They are nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, pronouns, conjunctions, interjections. These are the eight parts of speech, classes of words with the same kind of meaning and use. Now we're going to do sentences to analyze. The purpose of analysis is to identify all the parts of speech and the parts of a sentence so you can understand how it is constructed. Some chapters in this book will be review chapters, but don't skip them because each chapter builds on the next. Remember, you need to start at the beginning and identify the group of words as a sentence and also determine what kind of sentence it is. Note that all the statements in gray are to be said aloud and memorized. Where were Tom and his friends going? This is a sentence because it is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. It is an interrogative sentence because it asks a question. Imperative sentence, shake out the mainsail sheets and braces. This is a sentence because it is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. It is an imperative sentence because it gives a command. Exclamatory sentence, aye aye sir, it will be done. This is a sentence because it is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. It is an exclamatory sentence because it expresses strong feelings. For this initial stage, there are no markings. So that's why you just heard me read through it without um, any markings. It says here at the beginning of each chapter, you'll see an illustration that features classmates Gilbert, Elliot, Franklin, Midge, and Peggy. In the sentences you'll be studying throughout the book, you'll read about them and some of their siblings, Guinea, Gilbert's eight-year-old sister, and Porter, Elliot's nine-year-old brother. Spike, Peggy's pet hedgehog, also makes appearances. Pause for punctuation and marks within quotation marks. When a sentence begins with a quotation and ends with a speaker's tag, such as she said, the punctuation used between the quotation and the speaker's tag varies. It depends on which of the four kinds of sentence the quotation is. When quoting an interrogative sentence, place the question mark inside the quotation marks. Can't I steer the raft? Huck asked. When quoting an imperative sentence, place either an exclamation point or a comma inside the quotation mark. Grab hold of the rope, Joe shouted. Grab hold of the rope, Joe directed. 
When quoting an exclamatory sentence, place the exclamation point inside the quotation marks. Yikes, the rope is not attached, Tom exploded. On the map, in this chapter sentences for practice, the 10 sentences take place in Anchorage, Alaska, at the Thomas Planetarium located in the Anchorage Museum. Visitors who go to Alaska to see the night sky and the northern lights often go to nearby state recreational areas such as Flat Top Overlook or Glen Alps. See if you can find Anchorage, Alaska on a map. Now, as you can see here, this is in the teacher's book, the well-ordered notes A, four kinds of sentences. What is a sentence? A group of words. A complete thought. Okay, all right, we're going to analyze it. And this is an oral analysis. Steer the raft toward the middle of the stream near the current. What kind of sentence is this? Imperative sentence. Imperative, very good, because it gives a Command. Command. Very good. Watch out. The raft is heading for some rocks. This is a sentence because it is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. What kind of sentence is it? Exclamatory Ex sentence. Right. Because it expresses... Very good. And now you're going to rewrite the following sentences as another kind of sentence. For example, you're going to rewrite as an interrogative sentence, lunch is my favorite meal of the day. The rewrite as an interrogative sentence would be, is your favorite meal of the day lunch? You're going to rewrite the following sentence as another kind of sentence. And you're going to do both pages and then I will check them when you're done. Let's talk about some pros and cons of the well-ordered language, the pros. The material in well-ordered language is interesting. The books include delightful artwork, a story thread about a family, and excerpts from poetry and literature. Here in the student book, you can see there are frequent illustrations, plenty of white space, and easy to read fonts which make it child friendly in comparison to some rather dry grammar workbooks. So the cons, well, it's printed in black and white. That's not a biggie though. The one is my kids tend to get bored with the repetition sometimes. However, you can offset this by projecting energy and enthusiasm during the sentence analysis. And finally, chants are perhaps unnecessary when children can memorize it without chanting. <laughs> On the corresponding blog post, which will be linked in the pinned comment below, you'll be able to see all the links to the different pricing options. Um, but just off the top of my head, the student book is around $20. The teacher's book is around $20. Extra lessons, I think that's around $8. And the chants and songs MP3 is around, I think it was 18 but take a look at it to find out. Let's get into some FAQs about well-ordered language. The first question, when should I teach grammar? Because grammar and diagramming is the logical analysis of language, I recommend grammar to be taught like around the middle school ages. And obviously we're homeschoolers, so grade levels are arbitrary, so whenever you feel it's best for your child. Which book should I start with? The publisher of Well-Ordered Language recommends that you start with the beginning. However, if your child is very comfortable with the eight parts of speech and their functions, you could start with the level 2A. As always, review the table of contents and have your child work through some of the exercises provided in the free online sample. And the next question here is, what other grammar curriculum do you recommend the curriculum that you'll use? That is my answer to every curriculum question. <laughs> Otherwise, Cottage Press is a really good one. It offers an all-in-one language, grammar, and composition option. Next question. What other grammar resources do you recommend? The Grammar Girl book and the Dangerous Book for Boys, which are linked in the corresponding blog post. What if grammar is not my strong suit? Well, honey, get off your high horse and sit next to your child and learn it with your child. You might be a more effective teacher than the one who already knows the subject. This is the third video in the series, How to Teach Your Child to Write. You can watch the first video somewhere here.